was I saying? I don't even know. Oh, 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 oh. That God is no respecter of persons. What does that mean to y'all? Do I look like you? No. Do you look like me? No. Are you from, from my background? No. Are you from my background? No. Am I from your background? No. Am I born in the same country as you do? Not necessarily. Am I educated like you? No. Are you educated like me? No. Are you white, black? Are you Greek or free or slave or, or Jew? It don't matter to God. Y'all, come on now. I'm, you know, we live, we live. It is free. However, I, I want to share I want to share my heart with you. Tandy, I want to share my heart. I want to share my heart with you. I got some struggles. We live in a F-R-E-E. -E. Say F-R-E-E. -E. And say free! free. There's two kinds of freedom. There's physical freedom. I ain't in jail. I do a lot of prison ministry to ladies' prison ministry. And they're in transition, so they're not quite in hard time. They're not quite in good time. They're kind of, I call it in between time. Transitional. How many of you? Are you, how many of y'all are going through spiritual or emotional or physical transition period in your life? I'll oh, say, come on, y'all. Oh, yeah, all day. I got a shirt. Oh, I bought a shirt. It's black. It's got white letters on it. It says, all day. I wore it to Kroger the other day, and the security guard, he goes, all day. And I said, twice on Sunday, too. <laughs> I'm so funny. But I gave him a gospel track. I said, here. And it's one of my, you know, my gospel tracks. It was a Prince track or money track with, you know, uh, Trump and Hillary on it, whatever. I have some fun stuff. But I'm thinking about our freedom. Now, here's, the, here's, here's my struggles with, with this, being in a free country. I've seen lately people step on the flag, burn the flag, spit on the flag, tear the flag, and what else, what else can you do? You bury the flag, whatever the flag. It's a piece of cloth. Okay, got it, it's just a piece of cloth. But we live in a free country. Some of us are free spiritually speaking. How do you get free spiritually? You put, you put your faith in, in, in Christ. You can't say Christ is one way or, or the uh, one, uh, one of the ways to get to heaven. He's got to be the only way or you're not a Christian. Because you know what? He said it about himself. He said to the Pharisees that were very religious. How many of you know religious people? I don't, you know, I'm just saying. I, I love the Lord. I can preach. I can teach. I can, you know, do ministry. But... Uh, but do I look like I'm a religious person? I don't think so. Now, I can clean up pretty good. You know, I can wear a suit. But I don't like religion. Oh, God. The Pharisees were very religious. They went out to the town square so people could see them pray. When they went praying in their own prayer closet. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah, give me all of that. Hey, look, they wanted people to see them, but they weren't praying in their own prayer closet. They were praying out in the town square where everybody goes, Woo, look how religious they are. Oh, God, we're not like those poor sinners down there. Point fingers. I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't like it when people point their fingers at me. Because you know what? We all have sinned and fallen short of God's glory. Let me prove it to you. And that scripture was given for Christians. The Apostle Paul wrote that to the church of Rome. And he says, we all have sinned and fallen short of God's glory. That scripture is meant for Christians, not for, not for non-believers. You know why? You don't encourage a non-believer. You want to plead with him 
to come to a place of repentance of their sins and their faith in Jesus. We all have sinned and fallen short of God's glory is for you. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. See, if you're in a, in, a, in, a, in a Christian, you put your faith in Christ, you're going to heaven when you die, but you're having some issues with sin, say S-I-N, and what's the middle letter of sin? I. Say it again. I. Say it one more time. I. And say, I have sinned. I have sinned. Honest Christians would be on the front row in heaven. Mm -hmm. Now, Christians that just want to just ignore their sin are going to not be. Because, you know what? We all have sinned and fallen short of God's glory. Guess what's going to happen to you before you die? See, you're a Christian. Hope everybody in here. Oh, by the way, if you're not a Christian, today is the day to become a Christian. Why not tomorrow? Put your hand over your heart. Mine's beating per pretty fast, about twice a, twice a second. A little, I, it's about one and a half, about 70 times a minute. But it's going to stop one day. And I've had, I've had, I've had friends that believe left early in this life. My gosh. Lord, help me. Have you ever had friends leave early? Your mom, your dad, your, your child, your, your best friend. I mean, it's hard. But, but it's not, it's not just important to get your life cleaned up, y'all. Because why get your life cleaned up? Why get your house cleaned up, swept out? Everything's doing good, which you should be doing anyway. And everything's fine. I ain't doing what I used to do. But you're not saved yet. And so you are cleaned up, spit up. All things are going well. Your house is cleaned up. But you know what the Bible says? That it's a danger for you to get your house clean. And to think that that's all you need to do. Read it for yourself, right? Y'all know the story. You, you clean out your house and it makes room for how much? For more the, the spirits to come back. So I meet people all the time saying, you know what, I, I, don't, I don't do that anymore. Well, that's good. You shouldn't be doing that anymore. Yeah, I don't drink no more. I don't smoke no more. I don't cuss no more. I don't do this no more. I don't do that no more. Well, you should be doing that anyway. However, if you do all that and everything's good, man, and you're clear-headed and sober-minded and you die and go to hell, what good is it? What good is it? There's no good. Why die of a gazillionaire when you're going to hell if you die and you're not saved? Have y'all seen The Curse of the Lotto? That, that, that series they had? Curse of the Lotto, I watched it a couple of years ago. Regular people like me. So I'm a regular person. The problem with The Curse of the Lotto is Jesus said that having lots of money is a curse. No, you can, get, you can have a lot of money, still get to heaven. But he says it's harder for a rich man to get to heaven than a camel to go through an eye of a needle. Come on, hold on. Now, my personality, it's kind of wild. It's, I'm a tough guy. But I, I'm, I, can, I can be a patient, quiet guy when I need to be. Or I, I need more fruit of the Spirit. How many of you need more fruit? I don't want no more money. I mean, yeah, I need to pay my bills, and I need a car, and I need gas, and I need some food in my friend. Yes, Lord, take care of my needs. And if I'm a Christian, Jesus said he will not let his sheep go without what they need. But he knows who doesn't need more than they need because... He knows that it's going to be hard. That's why I don't get all these preachers on TV, these prosperity, prosperity preachers. Did you like my prosperity? God wants you to be rich. Hallelujah. God wants you to have a big house. Hallelujah. He wants you to have the best Cadillac. Hallelujah. And I said, what about my portion? No, I don't want more stuff. I want more Jesus. And so what he wants to give us today, there's a lot going on right now, isn't it? Mm -hmm. He wants to give us, and he has promised to give us certain things. Not better health. 
oh, become a Christian and have better health. You know what? Since I've been a Christian, I've had more health problems than I was before a Christian. Hello? Okay. Well, okay. So Christ died for what? What did he die on the cross for what? So I would have no health problems? Not. In fact, he was bruised and beaten beyond recognition. Do y'all read Isaiah? Have y'all read Isaiah before? Isaiah 53? He was beaten unrecognizably that nobody would know who he was. Come on now. Now, I asked, I, I asked, why, why, God, why would you, why would you torture your son before you crucified him? Now, could you imagine me walking in here? Be, beaten so unrecognizably that you wouldn't know who I was? That's serious stuff. So God is serious about sin. He didn't just punish his son on the cross and you know, have him pay the, pay the penalty that you and I cannot pay because we've sinned a thousand times. And Jesus did not sin in word, thought, and deed one time. And he was 100% human. God became man. Somebody asked me the other day. I was witnessing to him. He goes, yeah, I get you. I get, you. I get it, man. You know, Jesus died for I said, I don't think you are getting it. First of all, he said he was a good person. I said, have you lied? Yeah, man, are you, are you crazy? Of course I've lied. Well, how many times? He said, a couple hundred. I said, what would that make you a liar? He said, not really. I, I said, well, how many lies do you have to tell? He said, about 300. <laughs> Nobody wants to admit, you know, but the Bible says all men, all women want to proclaim how good they are. That's what the Bible says. All men are going to proclaim. They're not going to stand up and go, I'm a bad man. Well, you better say you're a bad man or a bad woman because you ain't getting to heaven unless you say, Lord, I have sinned against you. And here's I'm going to prove it to you. How many of you have told lies? Do I have 100 lies? Okay, I got one. How many of you tell more than 300 lies? 300 lies. I got 300 lies over here. 300 lies over here. 300 lies over here. How many of you lied 500 times or more? 500 times. Got a 500 time lie or 500 time lie over here. I'm going to do it one more time because y'all some big lies over here. Y'all some big. Y'all some big lies. Anybody's lit, anybody, anybody lied over 800 times since they've been born? Ain't it? Oh my word. Y'all some. You know what? If you lied once, you've lied a hundred million times. And all liars will perish on the day of judgment. Why do you need Jesus? Because I need a better way of life. No, you don't. You need Jesus because you sinned against the holy God. Mm -hmm. Jesus had no place to lay his head. Can y'all relate to being? Uh-huh. See? See? And the guy said, well, you know what? God doesn't know how I feel. You know, I have to be patient. You know, you have to be patient with people. Because people that are unregenerate, they're not filled with the Holy Spirit. They're not Christians. They, you need to be patient with them. And sometimes as an evangelist, I want to be like, you know, evangelists just want to go, come on, man. Repent. Repent and believe. You're going to hell. And I said, I, I just want to tell you something, friend. That God on his throne of grace before the foundations of the world knew that he was going to come and be a human being. So he knows exactly to the nth degree more than even you do how you feel. Come on, y'all. What do you mean Jesus suffered emotional trauma? Yeah. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Yeah. So here's the encouraging part, y'all. First of all, you got to get right with God. You got to get saved. One. If you're not saved, it's time to say, Lord, have mercy on my soul. I repent of my sins. I put my faith in Christ Jesus as my Lord. Period. Second, Jesus knows how you feel right now. And here's the thing. I don't know how everybody feels right now. People listening all over the world, here in the sanctuary, wherever. 
but the most important person that knows how you feel is Jesus Christ himself. His family disgraced. You turned their back on him. The disciples ran from him when times got tough. Jesus, Jesus, what are you doing? What are you doing? It's time to eat. I got food you know nothing about. What do you mean? I got spiritual food. I need to give my sheep. I need to take care of my sheep. And you want me to eat physical food? I can get to that later. I got more important business to do. And that's to save the souls of men, women, boys, and girls to get them to heaven. I got good news for you. I don't know where you are emotionally. I don't know where you are physically. But the most important person does now. Turn your neighbor and say, glory be to God. So I told the guy, I said, you know what? You're, 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 mis, you're misinformed. God knows exactly how you feel because he was 100% God, 100% man. He never quit being God to become man. He walked this earth for 33 years and experienced everything that you could ever imagine. He knows how you feel. Now, I'm going to tell you this. I'm going to tell you, and you need Jesus because you've broken the commandments. You've sinned against God. Well, I'm a good person. Well, see, everybody wants to compare themselves to somebody else. You know what? I'm an angel. If I go compare myself with somebody else, compare yourself with the law of God, that's how you can tell you need Jesus. So, first of all, I'm going to invite you to become a Christian today. Not because things are going to change, because you sin against a holy God, and God cannot tolerate sin. Now, if you're a Christian, here's some good news for you. Things may not get better, but the Lord wants the best for His children. See, it's like a paradox. Wait a minute. Well, Jesus had no place to lay his head. Foxes have holes and birds have nests, but the Son of Man, the one who created all the world, the universe, the stars, and the galaxies, he had no address, y'all. Jesus Christ had no address. If you're trying to mail Jesus Christ a letter back in those days, you wouldn't know where to go. No packages. Jesus got no packages. Let's be encouraged by that word. Now, whether a, a person next to you gets blessed before you get blessed, be, be happy for them. A lot of times as Christians, we go, nee. Turn your name and go, nee, 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 nee. <laughs> Y'all know what I'm saying. Mm. Why she why she get blessed and I ain't getting blessed? I'm doing the right thing. Am I right? I mean I'm alright. I've done it before myself. The Lord loves you and that's all that matters. And you know his disciples that were really, really close to him, guess what? They were confused a lot of the times. Turn to your neighbor and say, Sometimes I get confused about what's going on. There's some things happening. There's some things happening in this rim, in the rim of this city, in the rim of this country, in the rim of this world that we will never in our little finite minds understand. Turn to your neighbor and say, sometimes I just don't get it. And I don't get it, y'all. And, and sometimes I'm going like, you know, I don't, Lord, I don't understand why good things happen, you know, bad things happen to good people. You know why? We live in a sin fallen world. It's all about we live in a sin fallen world. Oh, I'm I'm a good person. Hey, you were born a sinner. You were born with a sinful nature. Turn to your neighbor and say sinful nature. Jesus could not have sinned ever because he was not born with a sinful nature. If he was born with a sinful nature, he could not have paid for your sin on the cross. I heard preachers say, oh, Jesus could have sinned. He never did, but he could have. Wrong! He did not have a sinful nature. Adam is the one that brought the sinful nature to you. So your propensity. 
I mean, I, I can't, I can't even say. I don't even know what it means. Compensate. I have lost my mind in the middle of the sermon. Your, 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 your tendency. I don't care who you say you are. You're a Christian. Walking with the Lord, reading the Word, going to church three times a day. Your, your tendency, because of your sinful nature, is to what? Walk on the grass when the sign says, don't walk on the grass. I, that's for me. There was a sign down in the prison, ladies' prison. And I just, you know, my mind, my mind, sometimes my mind, I said, why is it working like that, Lord? He said, don't worry about it. I made you just the way it is. I made your friends just the way they are. I said, really? <laughs> and it said, it said, it had a sign. And the sign on, on the, where it was, it said, don't walk on the grass. And of course, my mind, I'm going, you know, I'm done. I'm going like, First of all, it said, don't walk on the grass. Second of all, it was nothing but mud. I'm going like, get the sign out of there, man. Ain't no grass over here. But don't walk on the... It should say, don't walk on the mud. I used to like to play in the mud as a child. But of course, I had to get my picture taken next to it. I'm a picture guy, so... It's a hobby. Photograph is a hobby that keeps me out of trouble. I love the hobby. It's a good hobby. When I first somebody first got me in, I used to do the regular cameras, and then when I first got digital about ten years ago, I went like, wow, wow. And they knew I liked photography. I like taking pictures of my friends, my ministry, my life. You know, selfie. Oh, I was a selfie before selfies. I, you know, I should I should be a gazillionaire because I did selfies before selfies got started. my camera. I am the original. No. They sell selfie sticks now. Yes, really. Yes, really. But you know what? You should be. We live in a flawed country. But not, let me let me let me get on my let me get on it a little bit. When I I'm proud to live in this country. I can go where I want to go, do what I want to do. I can worship over here or I can worship over there. I can drive this car or that car. I can work and be self-employed or work for the man. I could be married to this person or that person. I could do whatever I want to do because I live in a free country. If you want, want different, I tell people that burn the flag, hey man, you have the right freedom of speech, but go to somewhere else and burn it. Go to Afghanistan. Go to China. Go to Russia. If, you don't, if you're not happy and you're burning the flag, Go somewhere else. But here's 
my struggle. The men and women of this country that have died, that have fought in wars, women, men, wars, died, been maimed, still injured, maimed, fought for this country, fought for your freedom and my freedom, that's what it represents. You're going to step on their grave. And I don't like it. However, there's a greater freedom than being in a free country. Now, y'all are free, and some people listening to this message are free, but economically, they're not free because they can't have a car and have gas and go to work. You know, that's another chapter. But men and women have died for this symbol of freedom. It's just a symbol. It's a symbol of freedom. And when I see when I see it being disgraced, it hurts me. However, this is my struggle. The very thing that these women and men have died for in battle, World War II, one, Korea, Vietnam, wherever, is the very same thing that gives them the freedom of expression to, to burn the flag. Hmm. That's what I'm struggling over, and that's what I struggle over, is that I have freedom of expression, but that doesn't mean it still doesn't hurt me. So when I see it being disgraced, it hurts me, because I live in a free country. Now, what good is it living in a free country if you're not spiritually free? Spiritual tolerance, Jesus did not tolerate anything but himself as being the only way. He said to the Pharisees that had it all, they knew it, they knew all the Old Testament, verse by verse, two men, I mean religious, they knew the Bible left and right, backwards and forwards, they knew the law, they said they knew the law. He said if to the Pharisees, the most religious people on the face of the earth, that were not free, he said, You're a full of you're a, a, a full of whitewashed walls, full of dead man's bones. He said, You look clean on the outside, but inside you're just full of hypocrisy. The worst thing that anybody could be is a H-Y-P, what, how do you spell hypocrisy? A hypocrisy person. Hypocrisy in the Greek means something that you're not. Put on a mask. Mmm, bad. You know, I'm, I'm a Christian. I'm a Christian just one day a week, and then on Sunday, man, I am. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. And then the rest of the way, man, I'm living like the devil. Mm, that's hypocrisy. Now, do we are we gonna sin as Christians? Oh yeah. Don't say you won't. You're gonna break some commandments before you die. You're gonna fall into sin. Your flesh is gonna be weak. You're gonna be caught in a weakness it, physically. You're gonna be caught in a weakness emotionally. And usually the times of those times that happen in your life is when you're either not reading your Bible or not praying enough and you just get caught in a little moment of time. Back in your own way. Part of that unredeemed flesh that's still not quite crucified. Some theologians don't believe in it. They believe in, oh, everything's been taken care of. Yeah, my freedom in Christ. I am free in Christ. I'm going to heaven. I'm going to walk on streets of gold. And I'm never, ever going to shed another tear. Never, ever am I going to have back problems. Never, never am I going to have emotional problems. Never, ever am I going to have to resist sin. Never, ever am I ever going to be tempted ever again. If you don't like that, I mean, you know, I can't, you know, that's all I'm gonna say. I'm tired of being tempted. But you know what? Encouraging. Turn to your neighbor and say, we're gonna close with some very, very encouraging words. We're 
Jesus was tempted in all points yet without sin so let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and receive grace in our time of need he was tempted in all things yet without sin he knows what it is like to be tempted far beyond you and me yet without sin the devil, he knew when they knock on Jesus' door out in the wilderness, 40 days of fasting, guess what? When you fought 40 days fast, guess what? Hungry! I'm sure it was a big old juicy, you know, lamb shank or something, you know what I'm saying, right? <laughs> if you be the Christ, turn that stone into something that you can eat. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. If you be the Christ, jump off this cliff and all your angels will come to rescue you before you hit the ground. He was quoting the Old Testament, the devil was. Did you know the devil knows a lot about Scripture? Hello. Be careful. When you pray, one thing you always need to pray for, I try to remember, pray for discernment. Discernment. That's what James says when you pray, pray for discernment. Because you know why? There's all kinds of weird doctrine out there. In there, there you, depending on where you go, people say this about God, that about God. You're going like, where is that in the Bible? That's always saying. When I go like, I hear people on TV. I'm going like, well, okay, you, you can say it, but I say BCV, BCV, book, chapter, verse, man. Come on, when you when you encourage a brother or sister that's fallen into sin, don't be doing that. I told you. No, no, no. That's not what your brother and sister need. I don't care how spiritual a person is. And I'm the first to say it. Come on now. I can get caught at the wrong moment in the wrong time at the wrong place. Some people that we know, oh, by the way, in this country, this is important. It is for me. How many of you, don't raise your hand on this, just kind of do an inside, raise your hand. You know what I mean? Oh, she raised her hand anyway. This represents innocent to prove the guilty. Oh. Really? Oh, really? Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. That, that's just the opposite of what it is in a communistic country. You're guilty until proven innocent. Here, you're innocent until proven guilty. Big difference. Okay, here's your inside raising your hand. I don't want you to expose yourself too much. How many of you have been in a court of law? <coughs> So, you know, that's, that's the system. How many of you from a judge have been shown mercy? How many of you had a judge that didn't show you a whole lot of mercy? You get me? Our men and women of our armed forces have died on the battlefield to say you are innocent until you're proven guilty. Okay, I'm going to close to This is going to encourage you. I've had many things claimed against me. How many of you had a few things said about you that was not true? Oh yeah, what's the Bible called? it? Slander! Slander! Gossip will kill you! It'll kill you, it'll, make you, it'll ble make you bleed into your soul. People saying things about you that are not true. Now if they're true, let it come out. 
Let the truth be known. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Spiritually speaking, you need to be spiritually set free if you're not. Because if you die today with a million dollars, with perfect health, with the biggest car, with the biggest house, with the greatest health, you'll still go to hell because you sinned against God. Get free spiritually first. I've had so many things said about me. So when you get to be ahead of something or... You're, you're organizing a ministry or a business or just whatever. People get what? They do. Jealousy will kill you. It'll hurt you. It, it's like gangrene. Oh, yeah, but you know, man, you got to do what Jesus did. When somebody says something, about you that's not true. You know what your nature is to do? You know what my nature is to do? Oh, come on, you yeah. oh, really? I got something to say. Oh, you want to go? Oh, you want to go there? I got no, but I got something to say. You want to go there? Yeah, you know what I'm saying? That's my flesh. You can live in your flesh, right? Or you can choose to be living in the Spirit, yes? How do you live more in the Spirit? Read the Word more. Mm -hmm. Because those, what's this, the, the Word is going to say, pray for love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control. Yes! How many of you need some more fruit today? Yeah! Boy, and love is first. I need all those self-control. I need a little more of that. I need some more. I need a lot more patience. Lord, help me. Now. Now, Lord, I need patience. I need patience now, Lord. I'm not. But we live in a free country. And I am proud to live in a free country. But I've had lots of things said about me that were not true and you too, right? So we're all together in that? Here's what I want you to know. The law of God says you're guilty of sin. And if you ever want to see God and get to heaven, you've got to repent and believe in Jesus that you know sin. That he was made the right, he made you the righteousness of God. You must be righteous before a holy God for him to say, well done my good and faithful servant. I want to hear those words, y'all. You know what words I don't want to hear? Depart from me, you worker of lawlessness. And you say, well, Jesus, I raised the dead and I cast out demons and I did all these good works in your name, Jesus. And Jesus would say, depart from me, you worker of lawlessness. Wow. They look religious, act religious, did religious things, but they practiced sin. Now, I'm going to sin as a Christian. I promise you that. I don't want to. God does not tolerate sin. But when you, want to, when you want to get good at something, what do you do? You know what I'm doing right now? I'm taking golf lessons. I am practicing. Because I want to get better. And he's teaching me to do this instead of doing this. I was doing this. He said, transfer that way first. It's taken me two months to do that. But I'm practicing lessons for golf because I want to get better. If you're practicing sin, check to see if your salvation is real. Christians are going to sin, but if you're in practicing it, maybe you're not regenerate. Maybe you haven't been filled with the Holy Spirit. One. Two, know that God loves you. We live in a free country. People have said things about me that were not true. And Jesus, before Pilate, he, he sat there right there. He didn't say a word and he says, Nothing. Pilate says, do you have anything to say? He didn't say nothing. He could have, he could have defended himself before, like a sheep and before his shearers is dumb. Jesus did not say a word. The best thing that you could ever do when people gossip about you and slander you is to say nothing. Because you're like Jesus when you say nothing. It's hard. Your flesh wants to go, oh, I know something about you. I can write a book too, boy. I'm going to write my tell-all book and you're going to be on the first chapter. 
but there's some things going on in this world, and I'm not being specific about it, but listen, whatever the case, whatever the case, hold those children back. I want y'all to be at peace. First of all, then your, your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Secondly, in this country, let the system, if you're accused of something, maybe you're innocent, maybe you're guilty, let the system take its course. Okay? The truth will come out. Let it be so. Because we all want to live in the truth anyway. Jesus is the truth. He saved us spiritually. He set us free spiritually. We live in a free country. Don't believe everything you hear until let, let it take its course. And then when it does, let God be glorified through the bad and through the good. Be encouraged by these words. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you for living, that we live in a free country. We can worship, we can preach, we can teach, we can do what we're doing today. We can, we can go and come as we please. Some of us we need to go some other place, but we can't because of economic situations or health reasons. But in general, we're a free country. But more importantly, through Christ, and Christ alone, that you know sin, we are spiritually set free. The shackles of sin have been cut. And we no longer have to fear our eternal destiny if we know Jesus. So Father, I ask you in Jesus' name to stir my heart and the hearts listening to this message that we would want to become more like Christ. Not that we need more stuff, but we need more fruit in our life. And help our troubled minds when things happen in this life. We hear things about people or people say things about us that we don't understand why they're being that way. Help us to just understand we live in a sin-fallen world, but you are our shepherd and you will guide us through the most difficult times that we may ever experience. So I pray that anyone listening to this message that has never said to Jesus, I repent of my sins and put my faith in you as my Savior and Lord, that today would be that day. And those who already know uh, you as Savior, that through these words of encouragement, I pray that I taught it with gentleness, respect, with boldness, and with confidence, not in myself, not in my personality or, or energy, but in confidence of Holy Spirit that's in me. Help me not to sin. Help me to live a life that's pleasing unto you. Help me to read your word more, to pray more, to reach out to others that are in worse circumstances than I am. So, Father, we surrender our lives, our will, our plan, our purpose to you. And we give you all the glory and all the honor. And all of God's children said, 